now to alleviate this crisis, the first thing I'm going to do is rebuild this reed valve as we continue. Now what I've done is I've taken the reed valve and put it in place right here like on the other side and I put the reed spring in place. Now the one thing about a reed valve and I want everyone out there, all of my students, I want you to take your reed valve out of your bike. I don't care what kind of bike you got. If you have a four stroke it's going to be a little bit hard to find that. Usually the reed valve on a four stroke is right next to the blinker directional fluid or your muffler bearings. And I would say that some of the better bikes have instead of one muffler bearing they have two and the special ones have been chromed for high speed. So now that we have the reeds in place I want you to look very very carefully at it. The, okay the reed is not um, the, it has not been screwed down. These little plates go on the other side of these screws and hold it down. There are three. If you will notice the there is a little bit of room wiggle room okay for the reeds also for the springs. This is very important that this stuff be lined up. The reeds have got to open. They have to flap open and closed. They have to flap open and closed if you have a CT intake like right here. They have to flap open in a confined space. In order for them to flap open and flap closed at say 10,000 RPM or 2,000 or 1,000 or whatever they have to be aligned and you can do it with your hands. Look, this is not rocket scientists, my friends. I suggest as a teacher of teaching people and taking the time, I'd much rather be out riding my bike right now. But instead I'm thinking about, okay, how am I going to rebuild my reed valve and my cylinder and put it on video to show my friends out in the world who may not know all this. And believe me, I'm an old man sitting in a place where they don't have racing mopeds. If I was in Hawaii with all the really great riders of the United States, the fastest riders, I would have 10,000 minds to pick on to ask questions. All I'm showing you is what I know. And as the Hawaiians would, would finally tell you that I am their... Um, mascot mainline Howley and a Howley means a really cool white guy in uh, Hawaiian I mean that's what uh, at least that's what they all tell me while they're smiling at me so now the reeds are on here right here the the reed valves have their holes are a little extra big and so are the spring holes right here this is the spring now these are the what what are called the reed stoppers. Now what they do is this. If you get at high speeds, your engine may need more fuel. And if it does, it's going to pull these reeds way open. Now what the reed stops do is they keep their and the reeds are on well let's see. The reeds are on this side of it. The reeds open and they stop. Now if you want more power, some people say it works, some people say it doesn't. You can leave them off. And I'm going to try and leave them off to see if maybe that I can, they'll open a little bit farther and I can get more flow to go through this area. And you can see the little bolt ends right there. The little, okay. Well, that's, these little plates go right there. Now your lesson for the day, for everyone that has one of these reed valves and you're having problems with your bike take this thing apart look at it watch my videos all you have to do is unscrew a, a couple of screws take it apart look at it put it back together if you have a CT like me CT um, intake like this it will say CT which is common you want to really check your edges for fraying on the reed, yellow part. You also want to check for metal fatigue 
that is right down along this line and this line on the spring. This is the spring. Now we all know as you, if you'll take a piece of metal, okay, and if you bend it, say you bend one of these tangs, I call them a tang, tang, you bend it back and forth, back and forth, it is going to get thin around the weak spot, which will be right there where those three little dots are. And it will break. It does the same thing when it's under pressure in the bike and that reed is opening and closing, opening and closing. It's bending it right at this point. Now I know that a lot of this may be boring, but in my world, in order to understand how something works, you need to understand what it does. You need to understand everything about it. In layman's terms, not in some technical jargon bullshit that if you're going to learn that way, you're not going to learn that way. You need somebody to, over your shoulder, saying, this is how you do it. Well, what, what's this question, Randy? What's this question? Keep asking. Keep asking a thousand questions until you get it. Because that is what a good teacher does. They impart knowledge to others, to students. And that's what I, I like my mother said, I would have made a great, a great teacher or a priest. I think I would have made a better teacher. Okay.